hear that music and it's Tuesday, then it means Joe Reichel must be somewhere nearby. He's right here. <laughs> He's going to tell you what he does to fix your home when it's damaged and uh, so many different things. It's amazing how many different scenarios you, you are exposed to. And uh, the phone lines are open if you'd like to speak to Joe. 622-9622 is the number, and that's the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. How you doing? Wonderful. You are a busy guy. You, you, you do more than damage control of homes and... and uh, Oh, look at all the, all the girls waving at me. All the girls wave at Joe. Look at this. All the women wave at Joe. I like it. Oh, <laughs> it blowing kisses, wow, too. Oh, man. Wow. What do I got to do to get that kind of attention? Maybe they were for you. No, I don't know. I didn't feel anything. <laughs> I didn't either. I think it was the, the glass <laughs> stop that. So I saw you the other night at the uh, Friday night art walk. At thing. the art walk, yeah. And uh, that was cool. That, that, I guess that's where cool. I'm going with this is you, I know this is more of a metaphor than anything else, but you control damage in other ways. You help out with these different fundraisers. You're actually part of the Literacy Council, right? Yeah, I'm vice president of the, the board of directors of the, the Literacy Council. Um, so, so what do you do? Just volunteer for everything? Just raise your hand? I volunteer for a lot of things. Uh, you know, my job with damage control is is to be the face, of, the public face of damage control. So I am out and about in the community a lot. Uh, I'm a, an ambassador with the CEP, the Chamber and Economic Partnership. Right. So I go to all the ribbon cuttings and the ground breakings and business after hours and, and all of those type of uh, uh, community events. And... Uh, you know, get involved in different ways. So pretty much if there's something happening, my job is to be there. And any, any feedback, any, any, um, like, yeah, feedback is a good, a good word, uh, regarding some of the preventive things that you've mentioned on the air, the fire height and not fire, fire extinguishers and smoke alarms and things like that. Well, a lot of people tell me, you know, you know, I like the reminders. Um, I don't have them or, you know, I need to do that. And that's why I hear a lot of times. So, um, you know, there's a there's a big gap. All of us procrastinate, so there's a big gap in us recognizing that we need to do something or that we should do something, and us actually doing it. Well, you know, here's the here's the irony. You know, if if I if if you say to somebody, don't forget to clean your room, it's like you're talking down to that person, right? Or don't don't forget to to clean your teeth, whatever, wash it, brush, wash it. But when you remind somebody of something that you know they already know. Like you remind a listening audience on the radio, don't forget to set back your clock or to put in new batteries. And, you know, it's like they, we, you know they know that. But there's always that one person who's, who knew it but forgot about it. Well, I think we all know it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and it's, we all know that it's a good idea to, to set aside money for retirement. But how many of us are doing but it? But to remind people of it. Well, <laughs> we need that constant reminder in order to do it. Um, you know, so it's the same with, with. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> what the heck was that? Oh, they were looking. It was funny. Do you do you, do you ever have somebody who does not have insurance? All the time. So what is this? What is their solution? What do they do if they have major damage to their home but they have no insurance? What do they do? Well, there's there's a combination of things, and and you know it, it's you know pretty much almost all disasters. I mean, we can liken it to even if you have insurance, you're going to still have out of pocket expenses, such as your deductible. So you know, no matter what your disaster is, even if you have insurance, you have the deductible. Your responsibility is to pay the deductible. So whether your deductible is five hundred or a yeah, thousand right, right, or. Right. 2000 whatever your insurance deductible is you will have to pay that so the same with someone who has a disaster and they're uninsured you know somehow they've got to come up with the, come up with the whole thing come up with the funds in order to take right, care of it right. um, you know and a lot of times you know we've seen people that get help um, family friends you know in order to do the work or, right, right. or they they'll go get financing well, go you, get a personal loan or something like that in order to pay for this stuff okay so now the, i don't know if this is more of a question for a banker but would a bank give like a second mortgage to a homeowner if the home is damaged i don't know you couldn't do it like a, after the fact you couldn't like oh a tree fell on my house i don't have insurance let me go get a second mortgage the, the bank the bank yeah, might go, I, I don't think so yeah they might say uh what maybe a personal loan or something like that would be yeah would be a, a way to go, or a, a private investor, or something like that, maybe. 
Wow. Well, maybe that's why you see sometimes these, like the, the little fish bowls in, in the convenience stores saying, you know. And yeah, tragedy happened. And, right. Somebody's, the you community know, needs to jump, pitch in and help. Right. And that's where, you know, making sure that you have the proper insurance. Have you had any of those where the community come? pitched in to help and. Um, we've we've had several where we've been asked to to render services or to help with people that have you know no insurance and they might have lost you know a lot. So you know, years ago we had a lady who worked here and her husband was in the appliance business, I think, if I remember right, and or maybe the delivery business. And, and anyway, he delivered appliances to one of those ABC Extreme makeovers where they actually tear down the whole house right. and put a new one up. Right. And so I was. Have you? So I don't even know if they still make that show, but has that ever? And that was in Tampa, so it was close. In fact, it was one in Gainesville. Right. Uh, a, a redone. Right. Thing. There was. Uh I forget that. So it looks like they they Ty Pennington came to Gainesville. Yeah, right. But I hate those shows. And why is that? (laughs) Does it does it mislead us the public as to how it does? It it makes it look so simple and quick. And they are a great. It's a great show. It's it's great for you know the audience to to see a a success story like that and you know to to be able to to rally in and, and help and that's great. However, it leads the audience to believe that this kind of work can be done in a half-hour program. So you lose the whole well, see, what I, I sense of one. time with a project or with a construction project. Okay, I watched one one time, and I've, you know, I've always had a question about the, the, the uh, foundation. Because it almost looks like they put a new foundation. How do they actually, how does the cement dry that quick? Is there something they do? They put oatmeal in it or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, there are some type of, uh, different types of chemical agents that can be added to, hard, to, to harden concrete faster. Uh, however, I'm not sure. I don't really know too much about concrete. So, uh-huh. But there are things that can be done to make it harden faster. Um, you know, whenever things are done like that, you, you need to allow the concrete, for example, if you're talking about, you know, pouring a foundation or pouring a, a slab, that needs time to cure. The longer it sits, the harder it gets. So anytime you start building on a on a foundation before it's cured, you know, you're risking causing everything's, everything's slipping, huh? Well, you're risking causing damage. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not it's not dried yet. So the faster you put things together, the the more chance you have of right. um, faulty building. For example, could could you literally elevate a home that was in the flood zone? Well, it depends on the type of home. Um, I mean, if this is a stick-built home, you could put it up on on piers, for example. Yes. Okay, so it has to be a stick home. Well, I, I would think so. Obviously, I mean, it would be hard yes. to bring a bring a concrete slab out of the ground and <laughs> elevate it. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen that done. No, it could be, well, all the pipes and everything is going through that concrete. Right. All the conduits or whatever they call right. it right any home that's built on piers though you could you could raise that on you know if it's up on on piers already right right so 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 do you have a um is the most common question in well the second most common i'm guessing the most common how much is it going to cost is the second most how long is this going to take they watch those shows that we're talking well, about? I mean, tip, you know, any project, one of the things that we talk about first, uh, you know, when we're dealing with a homeowner is the sense of time. Um, you know, that, that is one thing that needs to be discussed. And there's always a, always a, a deadline or a, a timeline that's put with, with almost any project as far as a, a, a set goal date, as far as when we'll be done with it. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, variables and a lot of uh, estimated times that we can put in. For example, um, you know, any type of time you have a construction project, you can set a date and say, hey, we'll be done by, you know, December 1st or whatever the, right. the date right. is. Uh, weather has a lot to do with it. Right. Um, that's probably the, the number one thing as far as with a construction project, as far as the weather. Um you know, going into the rainy season or, or whatnot. However, uh, when we're dealing with an insurance repair job, uh, these sometimes tend to, to last uh, longer, and that's simply because, you know, dealing with a variety of different people. For example, the insurance adjusters, they have to write up a scope, and that needs to be approved by the, the underwriting. And uh, once they cut a check then, um, if the person has a mortgage on the home, the name of the mortgage company is on the check. So the check has to go to the mortgage company. 
uh, the mortgage company signs the check and then they'll send back a or they'll cash the check and then send out typically a third of that amount to start the project and then there's inspections bank inspections that need to be performed and you know as far as certain um, set things that need done and then they send out more money so you know typically a, a disaster uh, repair takes longer uh, because of the different parties that are involved, the insurance company, the mortgage company. Yeah, you have a phone call, Joe. Uh, good morning. Thank you for waiting. You're on the air with Joe Reichel. Yeah, good morning, Joe. Good uh, morning. Today, yeah, uh, pretty quick here with the uh, cooler weather coming. Uh, I got one of those uh, gas fireplaces uh, uh, that uh, you don't have to vent uh, through the fluid. Just you turn it on and it, uh, everything, all the heat stays into the house. It doesn't go out the chimney. And uh, it won't it won't be too long now when the mornings get a little more cooler that I'll I'll put the pilot on and then I'll, I'll be using it you know in the evening to warm the house right. in the morning or whatever. Now I got a carbon dioxide uh, detector that it's about ten years old. I want to use it when I when I use that fireplace because that's the only gas I got in the house. And uh, so I, I put it I plug it in I push it in uh, you know and put it in and the little green light comes on. Now that detector is about ten years old. Do you think uh, it's still valid yet uh, or should I replace it? Um, I really don't know. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, yeah. Probably the best bet would be to check maybe the brand or the make uh, that it is. And, and um, once you did that, you could look up on the Internet, do an Internet okay. search, and then find out if they have a, an expiration or a warranty with them, you know, what type of – what they, they say as far as a company. Yeah, you know, like a smoke detector. Uh, what is the life uh, uh, a lifetime of a uh, life expectancy of a, uh, a common uh, smoke detector? Well, pretty much your smoke detector, as long as your battery is still working, you can test those. They have a test on them, and, and okay. I guess maybe your yours is maybe the same. It has a test button. You could test it, um, and I would think as long as they were testing, you know, as long as it was testing, you know, still going yeah. off every time you hit the test button, then, then it would probably still be good. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't have a, a a test button like the smoke detectors do. But uh, even even when you press on a smoke detector and it goes off, it still means that it's it's valid, right? Uh, yes. Uh, it, yeah, because I I believe that they're actually radioactive, aren't they, to some degree? Um, I don't know about that. I had read that someplace where it's a little it's a little bit of a radioactivity that may, that that they work off of, you know, and uh, over a period of time that can uh, uh, you know get weak. That it has to be replaced, but like you say, if you test it, if you have a tester, which most of them do, you can tell if it's uh, still valid or not. But uh, okay, I, I don't have the box on the watch call anymore because it's been 10 years. I can't find. I, I see if I can't find uh, a, uh, a uh, hello. Still here. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll see if I can find a name or something on the detector uh, that I could maybe call or look up on the computer and see if the, what they say about life expectancies for those uh, for that kind of equipment is. Yeah, that would be the, that would be where I would check. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Thank you for calling. And then the number here is the WSA Climate Control Source Hotline six two two nine six two two. So I have a, like a home like repair tip kind of a question. Well, hang on one second. Oh, you got something else? Yeah. Okay. What is it? Well, I just I looked up on the internet and there's an article in here that says there's little known about the exact length of lifespan for a smoke detector, and I think that would probably depend on the uh, brand, uh, make, and model. However, it says usually uh, some fire safety officials say is about 10 years. The life life expectancy or the life uh, span of a smoke detector. So we so. We, you know, we thought of you. Remember last year we gave you one to give away. Mm -hmm. We had one this year and we gave it away. I should probably get some and bring them in for the show. Just to give them away. Just to give them away. See, I've often maybe thought, I'll do that. I've often thought we should give away the uh, weather radios. Weather radios would be good. Something to give away too. We're almost at the end of the hurricane season. Maybe. Well, weather radios can be used all times of the year. And the weather radio is more than just a weather radio. It is more than just a weather radio. <laughs> uh, so, so my question is, here's a real, maybe this is off the, the charts for what you normally want to talk about. But if you have a metal surface that you want to paint, like let's say an outdoor table, one of those backyard things, and it's got rust all over the place, mm -hmm. right? Can you actually paint that without all those little bumps can you like scrape it down with something like sandpaper or something well you could scrape it down wire brush it get the the 
everything off it, steel wool, um, in order to get it sanded down to the the uh, paintable surface. But probably the best would be uh, using uh, maybe a sandblasting. Oh, really? Maybe sandblast it. How or, do you do that if just a home, a regular guy? Well, a regular guy probably wouldn't be able to do it unless yeah. you had a sandblaster. However, um, there are companies that specialize in metal like OFAB Inc. Oh, okay. okay. Gary Ringo okay. Uh, with OFAB Inc. He's uh, a, a referral partner of mine. I work with him quite a bit on different things. And actually, they're making some metal beams for a project that we're doing right now, decorative beams on the outside of a, a building. So... Um, I would probably refer something like that to Gary and so because you know where it shows up a lot, like on playground equipment, like backyard swing sets, right. that kind of thing. It's got the little where the things come together, mm-hmm. and you would, you would think what do they call it? vulcanized. What do they call it when they're supposed to never rust? What is the word? Is it um, rust proof. Rust proof. Okay, I don't know, but they're not. <laughs> but they never are. They always have the rust happening, right? Uh, typically, and, and really, too, it depends on the type of metal, too. Um, I just learned something by talking to uh, the owners of uh, Zeke, Zeke Technique. Um, they're a metal manufacturer, metal company, metal fabrication company, uh-huh. and uh, Mike, the owner, was telling me that uh, these metal um, electrical poles you'll see them they'll they'll turn a uh like a chocolate color brown chocolate and Uh it's kind of like a rust but that is a special type of metal and i forget exactly what he told me but that's that's the extent of it it will never rust more than that um that color i'll get that color but it's really not a rust it's or you know it won't rust out or or continue to corrode so it's kind of a neat. And so there's all types of different products out there and, and things that can be done. And it, and it won't come through the rest. Of, I mean, you can actually literally cover it, huh? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yep. Uh, the, the phone number is 622-9622. Are, are, do, do you have anybody putting up uh, solar cells nowadays? Do you, are you getting that kind of request? Or? Uh, we is get, it even worth it? I mean, a solar cell. Whatever they call the things they put on the roof to supposedly, like solar panels. Yeah, I guess to save electricity or something. Um, we sometimes have people doing it, and typically the the most common uh, nowadays it would be for pool heating. You know, heating someone's pool. That would be the the big thing right now. Um, a lot of times, as far as solar though, we get a lot of calls for uh, solar tubes, um, and that's not something we do. We use the solar guys. Uh, down in, just south of Bellevue, down towards Summerfield. Um, we refer all that to them, and they put those solar tubes in and, and really light up our room. Those are a, a really neat product Oh, to I use. think I've seen them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are cool. Yeah, it looks just like a light inside. Yes. Uh, and on the on the roof is just a little dome. Isn't, yeah, I and, think, uh, where did I see them? I saw them somewhere. Well, they have them, you know, residential, a lot of residential uh, applications, but also some commercial, so... Uh, I think I hit the right number here. The phone line is open if you'd like to call the WOC Climate Control Source Hotline. Joe Reckle here from Damage Control Services. And So what, what you have a project you're working on right now? Well, I just left a home this morning picking up equipment. Uh, we had a dish, uh, not a dishwasher, washing machine uh, that would not stop running. It just kept filling up. Ah. Um, so it, it, and it overflowing? Uh, overflowed and and no. wet a considerable area of the house. So yesterday went there and we took the uh, carpet out and and uh, dried, put the equipment in to dry out everything, set up the dehumidifier and the fans and and got that taken care of. And we have uh, also have another project that we're we're working on right now. Uh, this past week was a uh, toilet in an upstairs bathroom. The tank oh, and the yeah. toilet broke. Oh, and how that happen? Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but straight huh. straight plumbing uh, referred us to a job, and and the toilet um, toilet just kept you know water kept running, and it got all down in the the floor system in the upstairs bathroom, and or uh, from the upstairs bathroom, and flooded the downstairs. So we had to take the ceiling down and. And dry, get everything dried out in there. So that's that's that's, that's got to be a big part of what you do is is just dealing with the water issues, right? Water issues are a huge part, and and that's one thing they say. There's uh, over 600 um, in a month in this area. 600 and as far as floods, and and this is everything from uh, maybe a sink overflowing and and 
coming out on the floor and the homeowner is able to clean that up to a pipe breaking and flooding out the whole house. So there's a wide variety of, of these accidents that happen. Um, probably a lot, well, definitely a lot more than we ever realize happen. I, th- I think you mentioned before some kind of a product that you can spray on mold to stop it from spreading. Mm-hmm. Is, is it moldicide or something? A mildicide, mildicide. is what, you would, what is we typically use to kill mold. So anytime you have mil, uh, mold or a mildew, you want to make sure you use a mildicide, a product that's that's has that in the on the label. It will definitely say that it is a mildicide. You never want to use bleach on mold. Okay. Did I say that before? You never want to use bleach on mold. <laughs> I think you did. Bleach is a water-based product, so it oh, will kill. Oh yes, you did. Yeah. It will kill but the it's surface. Worth again. But the water, uh, the the bleach will not go. It not. It does not penetrate, so it does not kill the the root of the problem. It only covers it up. Okay. Now I don't know if I ever shared this with you. Years ago, I had a house and I had the air conditioner unit in the hallway. And it was, a, it was a carpeted hallway. And one day I'm walking down the hall and the, the soaked. Air conditioners do that a lot. See, I blamed the dog at first. Oh, then that found stinking out that, dog. Then I found out that what, what it was was the line that takes the water out of the house was clogged right. with, with mold. So Probably not so much mold as uh, algae. Okay. Things like, yeah, I'm, that calling, I'm calling it the wrong thing. But anyway, I was told to put a bleach shirt. Somebody I, mm-hmm. I know said pour just some poor bleach in it did it work yeah yeah but i think it may have also hurt the the uh the rubber in the long run because i remember that thing had a problem after a while it is there something else i should have poured down there well there are products nowadays that are specifically designed for that um and i'm not sure exactly what they're called um i refer all those type things to climate control (laughs) <laughs> the other control company. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Climate Control. They're a good company to call if you have problems with the air conditioning or able to, uh, they're able to, to assess the damage and, or what needs done and, and take care of it. But definitely making sure that your drain lines uh, for your air conditioner are cleaned out for sure. That is a, a top priority, especially you know through, through the summer, summer months while your air conditioner is running a lot. You want right. to make sure that's done. And, and there are different products that you can put in that drain line and, and clean them out. You know, and it's, it's good to do that every so often. Uh, bleach is one of those things that's commonly used. I don't know that it is the best. That's not necessarily recommended by air conditioning companies to do that. Right. But I'm not an air yeah, conditioning Yeah, well, company. and that's why I was trying to make it clear that it wasn't a professional who told me, just a guy I knew. No, no. Some guy off the street, huh? Well, no, I worked with him. <laughs> <laughs> but like me, he didn't know anything. So we're both guessing at life. He was a radio guy too, huh? Yeah, we both guess at everything we do. Well, hey, as long as you dazzle them or I know or where the gasoline goes with something in the car. Me too, and that's about it. Oh, really? You're not, yeah. You don't have that? No. That, that car mechanic thing going? No, no, no. I need help with that. Me too. Uh, well, we're just about out of time. I, was it last year you went to Pennsylvania? Was it this time last year? Um, I don't remember exactly when I went. I was up there for the summer, I believe. But uh, I will be going up uh, towards the end of the month, heading up to uh, see my family. Oh, okay. So, so, so wow. So you might you might find some at the end of the month. It could be snowy by then. It could be. They've already had snow up there. Oh, they have. Yeah. The uh, so they've got their own source. Of end of October, they had uh, up towards northern Pennsylvania got some snow. So they got their own things that cause damage that we don't. Yes, have. lots, lots more of freezing pipes. Uh, anytime you have uh, a lot of ice backing up in the gutters, you know, as far as freezing and thawing, it gets in the gutters and and will. Uh, I like the bow tie. She's not <laughs> listening. I don't think too many women wear bow ties. I that like that. That was cute. All right, Joe, what is your phone number? My phone number is 352-817-6574, or you can email me, joe at damageflorida.com. That's joe at damageflorida.com. When you need them, you better have the number. Get one of those magnets. One of my magnets. I've got lots of them. Put on your refrigerator or your second refrigerator. I heard that a lot of people have two refrigerators. (laughs) Yes, they do. (laughs) Oh, that's the wrong thing. Here comes the music again. All right. Uh, Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Larry. Have a great day. Thank you. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. (laughs) 
Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! ABC News Now. I'm Karen Chase. A note left behind by the suspected gunman in the New Jersey shopping mall shooting may offer a clue to his motive. Investigators say it wasn't a suicide note, but did express depression. No one else was hurt when he opened fire in the mall until he turned the gun on himself. A Norwegian TV crew was detained, harassed, and threatened with imprisonment by Russian police during a reporting trip to Sochi 96 days before the Olympics. A human rights group says their treatment should shock the International Olympic Committee, which should demand a full explanation. Another day of Capitol Hill grilling for the head of Medicare, Marilyn Tevener. She told the Senate committee the government's health care website can and will be fixed quickly. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie could boost his profile in the presidential race if he wins re-election by a large margin in today's election. Can the news be summed up in 140 characters or less? A new study finds 8% of Americans believe it can. That's how many get their news from Twitter. 30% say they depend on Facebook to stay informed. This is ABC News. I have two cats and two dogs. All four of them are on the Dynavite. This stuff is amazing. The first day that I gave Sweet Pea and Daisy the Dynavite for cats, in fact, I did add a little bit of the lick chops and they absolutely loved it. All the vitamins, the minerals, you know, they also enjoyed the num-nums, <laughs> the nub-nubs or whatever they're called, the treats that also came along with it. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. They're just running through the house. They're playing. My Sweet Pea will walk in front of me. She'll Stop where she's at, drop and roll onto her back, and then expect me to rub her belly. Just like a kitten. Daisy and Sufi have a cat tree in my living room, and lately she's been climbing up to the top, jumping up there, and then she'll climb back down, and then she's right back up again. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I wish they would make a product for us humans to give us the same amount of energy and bunk that Dynavite for cats are given for my, my cats. The phone number is 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Wear it, Florida. Intervals of clouds and sunshine today and breezy with a shower in spots mainly near the coast, the high 79 to 83. Tonight, partly cloudy and breezy. There can be a shower near the coast, the low 67 to 73. For tomorrow, a warm day with intervals of clouds and sun. There may be a shower along the coast, the high 81 to 85. Thursday, intervals of clouds and sun warm and humid, the high again 81 to 85. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. Don't ever miss a single edition of the Mike Huckabee Show. We're going to have a whole lot of fun talking the big issues of the day. We'll talk to the newsmakers and the issues that made them a newsmaker, as well as we'll bring you some entertainment, some fun. You never know what's going to happen on the Mike Huckabee Show. Don't miss it. Join Mike Huckabee every weekday from noon to 3 exclusively on WOCA The Source. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Wear it, Florida. Intervals of clouds and sunshine today and breezy with a shower in spots, mainly near the coast, the high 79 to 83. Tonight, partly cloudy and breezy. There can be a shower near the coast, the low 67 to 73. For tomorrow, a warm day with intervals of clouds and sun. There may be a shower along the coast, the high 81 to 80.